if it hasn't traded to that 15 minute or hourly sell side liquidity pool, it's not done. His model says aim in that direction. If it's 50 handles to get to that low, doesn't matter. He's not holding for them 50 handles. He's trying to get 10. But why would he do that, ICT? He's supposed to be your son. You know, why would you tell him to do that? Because he's a fucking human being, just like you are. Why aren't you making money with everything I've already taught? Why aren't you out there passing combines? Why aren't you getting fucking taking uh, withdrawals from your express accounts? Why aren't you doing that? Because other people are doing it. So stop putting fucking stupidity in the, in the conversation. He has to learn, just like I had to learn. Every one of us has to go through that process. Learning how to do this takes time. It takes a lot of effort, and you have to wade through a lot of bullshit that you bring to it yourself. You do. He's brought it to himself. He has now scar tissue, trying to do it faster, trying to do it outside the rules I laid down from the first time. He blew his combine accounts. He's done it. He's done that damage. So now he has to go through what? The growing pains. And small little incremental wins and successes help mend that. Doesn't completely wipe it away, but it helps restore at least the proper mindset. And it encourages you. How many of you would have been encouraged if you would have made over $1,600 in one week? Trading a very small number of contracts. He did one trade that I'm aware of that he did two contracts on. But every other trade has been one contract of a mini, not a micro. He was adamant he doesn't want to do the micro. He goes, I want to do this, that. I want to, I want to make the $20 per point. I don't want to trade the $50 per point ES because he thought that ES, the $50 would be more scarier. It's not. It's actually a smoother, slower delivery. I wanted him to be an ES, but I allowed him, like I allow you as your mentor, to bring his own personality into it because you can't press everyone, even my son, you can't press everyone into a a mold and make everybody come out like a cookie cutter result. It doesn't work that way, folks. It does not work that way. And if you believe these pieces of shit online that tell you that they can take everybody and turn them into the same thing, like a robot repeating over and over again, same bullshit, their results don't speak that. They don't even have profitable students that are consistently making money. I had students leave my stuff, go somewhere else in clownery, Make all kinds of videos. Say they're going to do all, all the, oh, we're making so much money now. And they deleted everything because they've shit the bed. You can talk the game. You can talk all that shit. In the beginning, you're going to talk all that shit. I'm going to make a lot of money with ICT's concepts. I'm going to quit my job at this date. And then when you start trying to learn it, it's like, oh, shit. What's going on here? You, you're rushing it. You're trying to burn those candlesticks too fast. And you're counting the grains of sand thinking you're running out of time. You have to learn it by this time or else. You're trying to master it. You won't master it. You're never going to master the market. You're never going to. I'm not a master of the market. I'll say that again. I am not a master of the market. I can only master myself periodically because sometimes the human element in me creeps in. I'll be mad. I'll be this, you know, discouraged about something that's going on in my personal life. I'll be distracted. I won't be in front of my charts when I should have been. I look at moves and I think to myself, okay, it would have been great to be in that. I'm not beating myself up about it, but I'm recognizing that. That's a character flaw. I'm human. You're going to have all those same things. But here's the worst part about it all for you. You don't know how to make money yet, but you feel rushed to do it. You got to keep up with the Joneses. You got to do everything else. And that's what my son wanted to do right away. You want to jump out there and be ICT junior, show the trolls what's what. And found out that it's not easy being me. It's not easy just going out there and taking some videos, taking some logic just heard from the lips of a man that's been dealing for 30 years and thinking that you can just walk out there and do the same thing. It doesn't work like that. It's harder. But he has to take that 15 minute or 60 minute chart and derive a draw on liquidity where he thinks the market's going to draw to. 
And as long as it hasn't traded down to it, if it trades to it one time, he's done. He can't use it. He can't use that framework. He has to wait another day or trade something else or wait in, you know, till the afternoon. So he doesn't have a specific time. Like he's not always operating in 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock. He'll, he'll trade when he sees that that liquidity is presently a draw. And if he wants to be in front of the chart, 30 seconds allows him to take that 10, uh, not 10, 10 handle run. 10, uh, 30 second chart is doing 10 handles all over the place inside of one hour, which is why I've always laughed at these fucking clowns. Like I could do their whole fucking month their whole month, I can make their whole fucking month with a real money account. I could do that in 60 fucking minutes. I will lap their ass. That's why they talk bullshit. They ain't done shit, but talk shit. But you don't need to have your, tar your take profit or your draw on liquidity reach to for the, the model to work. You need to have an understanding of where the market is likely to reach to. <laughs> Let me think of it like this. Um, you're in a trade. You've been in a trade. You've taken a trade. You tried to do a combine. You did it with real money account or you did it with demo. And you put the trade on and you know you don't want to see it go to a specific price point. It may not be a stop loss that you actually put in there because you're afraid to put a stop loss in because that confirms and solidifies you were wrong. Instead of saying, this is where I'm wrong and I don't want to lose any more than this. That's the proper mindset about using a stop loss. Because you want to be right. You can't accept the fact that you're potentially wrong. If I was 100% accurate all the time, every single time, and I knew there was no chance for any manual intervention to ever step in there, I would never use a stop loss. Why would I need one? I'd be right all the time, right? But having a stop loss is a testimony to you respecting the risk, which is required. In the beginning, you don't respect the risk. You concern yourself with the risk of being right or wrong. That's, that's the, the limitations that you place on yourself in terms of mitigating anything in terms of risk. The risk of you taking a loss for the sake of doing it wrong, not for the basis of you only took this much as a loss in monetary sense. And there's a paradigm shift that has to take place, and I'm teaching him how to do it the only way I know how to teach it. Whereas you have to frame a 15-minute or a 60-minute draw on liquidity where the market's likely to go. And then on a one minute or five minute chart, if you're bearish, there has to be some run above a five minute swing high, even while it's been going down, it has to go up above it and start trading lower again. And then once it does that, you can drop down into a 30 second chart and take a five, I'm sorry, take a, a 30 second fair value gap. Because the damage has been done on the five-minute chart. It, it, it could have been a stop run on a swing high in a one-minute chart. See, that's what a high-frequency trading algorithm is doing. So you don't fucking know that because these clowns out there are talk, talking about algorithms. These want to be quants. You might talk about all kinds of shit and call things quant. You may say your shit's algorithmic, but it's retail. But every fucking high-frequency trading algorithm, every single one of them, has to have a disruption in order flow. Before they will institute a new order. That means they cannot go short until it goes up. It has to go up. Why do you think I taught you discount premium? Because I am algorithmic. Enigma is fucking talking to you. It's not a yin and yang fucking symbol on some bullshit. The market has to go up purge some measure of liquidity if the market does i don't give a fuck what market it is but if you're bearish and on a five minute or one minute chart if a swing high a short-term swing high on that five or one minute chart is taken out by one tick and it trades lower as soon as it trades lower on well, what time frame are you talking about whatever time frame that liquidity was taken on if you see the swing high on the five minute chart has been pierced by one tick is all it takes. It doesn't need to fucking close above it. It doesn't need to have a certain measure of handles above it. One tick. Once it does that, that's a disruption. That's a disruption in order flow. That's it. That starts the sell program. Then on a lower time frame, 
It can be a five fucking second chart. It could be a one second chart. Okay. It doesn't matter. But I gave him a 30 second chart because it's easy to get in there and take a fair value gap after that disruption and order flow. Knowing that the market will gravitate towards that liquidity. We need not see it trade to it. Now, some of you that are familiar with watching lower time frames and have been with me for a while, your fucking gears are turning right now. You're like, holy shit. I can see this and I'm not even looking at the fucking chart. I can understand exactly what he's saying right now. These juices are flowing on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's there every day. Every hour. Every 15 fucking minutes. It's there. So forget the 90 second or 90 minute fucking bullshit. It's every 15 minutes. It's there. I literally could sit there all day long, trade just intraday volatility, just doing what I just told you. And mop the fucking floor with all these fucking people out there talking shit. Selling shit, robots and stuff. It's dumb. It's dumb. You don't need all that stuff. As soon as you take the very first Fair value gap on the 30 second chart after that one minute or five minute disruption in order flow, that stop run and it, that time frame starts to trade lower. The very next candle, when it starts to trade down, okay, you drop down to the 30 second chart and you wait for that little 30 second retracement because it's going to happen. And you look and see where your 10 handles would be. Place your limit order. Put your stop loss in. He risks 12 handles. He's willing to take 12 handles as a hit. To take 10 out. What the fuck did he just say? He just said he's using a negative R. Yes. Because your reward to risk model bullshit is a myth. It's a fucking myth. You don't even trade with it. You want to talk about it and sell your courses. And these people write these fucking books. But they're not trading with these fucking things in mind. Every person that's ever come out there and said that shit, give it enough time, they eventually come clean and say, well, you know, it's theoretical that if you did this, you can get 20 to 1. It's theoretical you can get 200 to 1, but they haven't really done it themselves. But hey, theory sells, right? You don't need to have a fucking 3 to 1, a 2 to 1, or a 1 to 1. If you have a high strike rate, what's a high strike rate, what I just told you? How many times do I tell you something before it happens and it happens? It's real logic. Nobody gets lucky like this, folks. It's th that doesn't happen. Luck doesn't exist here. It's statistical probabilities rooted in real algorithmic price delivery, not retail logic trying to decipher something that has absolutely no basis on harmonic animal patterns. Elliott wave horse shit, supply and demand horse shit. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. This stuff is predetermined. It's running on a script, period. That's all it's doing. It's time-based. And you're complicating it, worrying about dumb shit. Oh, it's dropped down. I can't sell short down here. It's been going down. Why the fuck not? It's going somewhere. It's going down the south town, okay? Below the old low, below the relative equal lows. It's got something down there it wants to visit. It's warmer in the south. It wants to get down there. It needs some sun. I can't do it. I just can't do it, man. It's it's already gone down 100 fucking handles. I can't imagine it going down 35, 55 more where it should fucking go where the liquidity's resting below the lows. Why would it want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I can see why everybody would think that way because that's what all the bullshit artists talk about. The books, the people that don't fucking trade. They sell you all that stuff, like timeshares. Makes it sound like it's a wonderful thing until you get in. You wish you could get out of it. You can't. That just hurt some nice feelings. Fuck. He just knew I wasted money on a timeshare. <clears throat> so once he gets his 10 handles, he's done. But what is he doing after he gets out? He's watching it still go towards that level. So what is it teaching him? What's it teaching him? Discipline? Cookie reward. Huh? Yeah. This is how you follow a rule-based idea, 
you go in very, very carefully, do a little bit at a time. You don't need to get into a trade right now to make three times what you're risking and, and view that as, oh, this is the only way to do it. Because right now, if you're honest with yourself, if you and I were in a, a conversation, it was just you and I, nobody could hear it, wasn't recorded. And I gave you my scouts on us, promised that there was no way I was going to talk about who you are and what we talked about. And I asked you, right now, you have extraordinary results as a goal, and you won't accept anything less, right? And at first, they might look at me perplexed, like, no, I just want to make money. No, no, no. You want to be next to flawless. Hardly ever, if ever, taking a loss. Never putting your stop loss in the wrong place. And you're wanting to find a way to get to that point because you see me doing that many times. And you think that that just happens overnight. No. No. You conquer that bullshit thinking, that toxic way of internalizing your potential or progress in this by going in and taking out incremental movements towards a goal that's larger. My son's not going to be a 10-handle trader risking 12 handles. That's not what he's going to be. My son's going to be taking down the whole fucking daily range. From high to low, that's what he's going to be doing. But he can't learn that just going out there and just trying to do it from the beginning. You have to grow. You got to become confident after you have had your confidence been kicked in the, the nuts, basically. That's what he's done with his combines that he tried to do with ignorance, thinking it's going to be like a video game. This is not a fucking video game. It's not a video game. And any fucking clown that says that, show the testimonials from your students. Not the one that just found some market replay horse shit this week. Where are they at the last year? Where's their withdrawals? Where's their profits? I'm producing monsters. I'm producing fucking machines, terminators, motherfuckers that's going to be here long after I'm gone, making money, doing it their own fucking way. And not giving a shit what anybody else says about what it is that they learned. Because they went through the process of doing it correctly. See, Cameron had a goal. He wanted to be out there about this time, by the end of the year, parading around, peacocking. Look what I did. Ha! Look at this. One. He had a hit list of all the YouTubers he was going to go into the comment section and do all this bullshit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But he got humbled. That's okay. It's good for him. It's actually good for him because it slows him down. Now he respects what it is he's trying to learn because he didn't have the respect for the risk. And now he processed a uh, – he, re he requested, rather. I don't know if he got it yet. I guess he'll have to tell me when he wakes up. But he asked for a $740 payout. So he said that they would only give him 50% of what he had already earned. So I guess at the time when he was requesting it before he made the other 200 and some dollars on Friday, it worked out to be like 740 bucks. He needed to see that. He needs to see it in his hands. And when that happens, it'll solidify it. Because again, $740 is literally fucking nothing. It's nothing. It won't even buy one tire for my fucking cars. So it's minuscule amount of money. But for an 18 year old that doesn't even net that after taxes in a week, that's the whole new world to him. For some of you, if you just did that, not the $1,600, if you just made $700 a week, what would that do for you? So you don't think that way, do you? You don't think. What if I just made $100 a day? And you started there. And you built up your confidence. Are you consistently made, able to make a very small amount of money that's easily, easily, <laughs> easily reached? It's a low-hanging fruit objective. That's what I wanted to present to him. I said, look, 
10 handles is easy. You can do this all day long once you get good at it. Like you can literally go up and down, up and down all day long and really just destroy it. But you can't do that without knowing yourself, how you're going to think, how you're going to feel. And the only way I could do this with him was teach him how to focus on a draw on liquidity that is highly probable. That means it's on an hourly or 15 minute time frame that has not been traded to. How do you know when not to take the trade, Dad? Did it trade to that liquidity pool on an hourly or 15 minute chart that you maybe would have looked at or had in mind? If it has, you're done for the day for that market. You can't trade it. How about that for fucking logic? How about that for fucking mindset, not worrying about or fearing missing out on the move? There's nothing to fucking worry about. And this ain't even a complete fucking model. It's incomplete. Incomplete, and it's beating the fucking ass out of 90% of the shit that you see on YouTube. 